Okay, well, welcome everybody to the presentation. Um, so this is again, printmaking and process. And this is a virtual tour of archived artist and archives founding, founding artist, Phyllis Sloan, led by her daughter, Jenna, and then also a curator and uh, print process talk from Kelly Pontoni. So it's gonna be a really, really beautiful presentation today. So pretend I'm Mindy for the minute, and I'm going to go ahead and sort of introduce things and thank our funders. So, and then we'll do a little Zoom housekeeping. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll do the Zoom housekeeping first, and that way it gives a little more vamp room for Mindy. So Zoom, welcome. You've all done a million Zoom presentations, and I just want to give you a little bit of the lay of the land of how we are, in fact, going to run the presentation today. So, um, so in addition to hearing from Kelly and Jenna, um, there will in fact be a Q&A portion at the end of the presentation. How you actually do that as a wonderful participant is that there is a Q&A function in Zoom. Two little chat bubbles. Go ahead and click that and type your question in. At the end, I'll ask them of Jenna, of Kelly, of whoever they're directed to. There's also a chat function, singular bubble. Um, do not put questions in the chat, Ugh, not because there's any problem with it, but I might miss it to be fair. But you can use the chat to chat with any of the participants or any of the panelists here today. Um, but you know, we always ask that you keep it kind of sparing so that you're not too much, you know, pay attention to the teachers. <laughs> so uh, that being said, um, we're also, by the way, going to be taking some questions from in-house. We're live at Judson Manor in their ballroom. Welcome to everybody who is there today. Um, and Judson Manor is where the print and process exhibition is being shown till June 27th. So let's give the slideshow a whirl now. So first off, thank you. We're celebrating 25 years in 2021. In this amazing image, you can actually see Phyllis Sloan. She is and actually so right here in that. So I don't know if you can see, but she's in the beautiful silvery gray dress. Uh, Phyllis was one of the original founders of the archives, along with all of these artists here. You have Randall Tiedman, Shirley Campbell, uh, Robert Jurgens, um, Bill Jean, uh, David E. Davis, the founder, Pat since Vaster Parker, uh, Phyllis Seltzer, and David Haberman. Oof, got them all. So thank you to our founders very much, which and uh, Bernice and David E. Davis Art Foundation, uh, to the Cleveland Foundation, to the Gunn Foundation, and to the Zoo Fall Foundation. And of course, thank you to Judson Manor for being here and hosting these amazing satellite exhibitions. So I believe at this point, Kelly, can you correct me? Is this? Yeah, you're gonna turn that off, and it's Mark. Mark is up. Cool. Stop sharing, and ta-da! Mark is up. Oh, less painful than I thought. Welcome, Mark. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm, I'm Mark Corcoran and I'm chairman of the House Committee here at Judson Manor. And we have uh, initiated this fabulous collaboration with the Artist Archive of the Western Reserve. Um, our, my dear friend, Kelly Pontoni, is registrar of the, the archive. And she's also a very talented artist and printmaker. Uh, so she knows whereof she speaks. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over now to Kelly. Thank you all for being here. Wanted to remind you, you'll probably be reminded 16 times before this is over. We have a new show coming in on Tuesday called Converge, and it's highlighting LGBT artists in the archive. And it's the first time it's ever been done. It's a big show, an exciting show. So I'm going to turn it over to Kelly. Thank you. All right. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, you know, there's always some technical difficulties. Um, and thank you for attending the <laughs> rescheduled show um, because I had hurt my thumb <laughs> last um, two weeks ago, the morning of the presentation. And um, there was no way that I was gonna make it. So thank you everyone here at Judson and on Zoom um, for coming again, making this happen. This is very exciting. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the pieces in the show and the process. And then, you know, the, the highlight of having Jenna here from um, Santa Fe will be the second part. 
So I'm going to ask Mindy, Megan to start the presentation. Okie dokie. All right, how are we looking? Is that full screen and beautiful? That looks, no, no, um, it's the split screen. Mm, okay, two shakes. Like a presentation mode. Mm -hmm. So as she gets that going, um, I graduated from Cleveland Institute of Art in 2019. So I was an older student. Um, they call them non-traditional. I just call them older. Um, and my major was printmaking and painting. And um, I had done a internship. Actually, this is Lilith. She's our intern. She is in a program with Studio in the School. So I had participated in Studio of the School and I interned at the Artist Archives. And I fell in love with um, the organization and their mission. Um, and one of the very first projects that I had done as an intern was to look at Phyllis Sloan's collection and take photographs of them. And I just, as a printmaker, just fell in love. So, um, all right. So this is just a little animation. I'm first gonna talk about woodcuts and relief. Um, in the show here at Judson, we have three archived artists, printmakers, Phyllis Sloan, um, Kestitas Kavicious, which who we call Kesti, and David Haberman. Um, so Kesti and David Haberman have woodcut and etchings, um, and then Phyllis Sloan has the heat, tr heat transfers, lithographs, and screen prints. So this kind of shows you and gives you a little um, example of what wood carving is. You can go to the next. Yes. And that, that mode looks correct, right? Yes. Kelly? yes, perfect. Thanks. Gorgeous. So these are two pieces that are out in the um, gallery space. And a little bit about woodcut. Um, when someone is carving a wood or linoleum or anything, you have to cut any types of words backwards. So what's nice about the show here at Judson is you have the plate right next to the print and you can <laughs> look at both and you can see how the whole entire image had to be carved backwards. Um, and I think with this type of carving, Kesty was, um, he was a very, very physically big man and he had big hands. And, you know, I, I look at his prints and his plates and I can't believe the precision, you know, in some of these, he gets very, very thick lines, but can have very, very delicate small lines. And that's what's really nice about the wood. Um, so that's, you could go to the next one. Megan? Maybe. There you go. There you go. Didn't switch. Are you frozen? Oh, um, are you, I see it. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you, but you're glitchy. Hmm. And can you advance? I did. So right now on my screen, it says Castus Castus Dark Farm Relief Print and Linoleum Block. All right. Let me try. Yeah, Jenna, can you, what slide do you see, Jenna? Sorry for a little in-house talk, guys. Kesti, it's the last one that Kelly was talking about. sharing for a minute? Mm -hmm. No matter how many times we practice. All right, let's give it another whirl, guys. Um, am I glitching right now, Kelly? Can you see my face okay? And it's not. We practice. <laughs> All right, let's give it another go. All right. How about so now? Nope. Nope. Can you stop sharing and then share again? Yeah, funny, I did. Screen share. Um, and we are 
right here. So I was not looking. So <laughs> he um, used a paintbrush. And if you look very closely to the plate and the print, you can see how painterly the etching marks are. So with the touche, he would um, make his marks and then in an acid bath, it would actually um, engrave the plate. And then when he would print it um, with engravings, you have to put the ink onto the plate and then you have to wipe it off. So it's this whole very, very different from relief. With relief, you're kind of just um, rolling the ink on and then putting it through a press with an etching, you're putting the ink on and then you're wiping that ink away. Um, and with those, you will also get some type of plate tone. You can't get that crisp white all the time. If you could go to the next one. So this David, David Haberman, um, these are etchings. And uh, what I love about David's pieces is if he cut the actual plates. So what that means is he takes away all of that other metal, which allows when it's pressed through the press, you know, going through the press on the paper, you can see the embossment from the plates. Um, usually, Printmakers will soak the paper like an hour before. Um, this relaxes the fibers of the paper and allows the press really to push that plate into the piece. So I was just looking as I came in, I was showing Lilith. Um, if you look, you can just see that sharp edge of the plate on those prints. And I think that makes, you know, that adds to the composition so much. And with David's, um, these are all pieces that we have at the archives. Let me see if I can get this up. So you can kind of see that he used this same plate in multiple different pieces. Um, with printmaking, you usually print in multiples. Um, a lot of the pieces out in the gallery space will have addition numbers on them. Um, and what David would do is he would change the composition, but use the same plates, which I think is really great. Um, the piece that we have <clears throat> here at the show, he had put some red in, and that's a picture of him at the bottom. He currently lives in Texas with his wife. Um, so these are just a sample of the two etchings done very, very differently, but same type of process. All right. This is one of the restrikes. And if I was, if you look closely at this piece, if you look in the woman's neck and in her collar, you will see like um, black marks. And that's kind of why the whole collaboration with CIA, CIA started because Mindy did a Zoom talk last year for the Cleveland Print Club, and we talked about Kesty's work. And I started to notice that the plates were breaking down because it's been, you know, 30 plus years. And in the woman's neck and in her lapel, that should be like white. That shouldn't have those little pit marks. And if you look at the plate, you'll see those little pit marks. Okay. So now um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about screen printing. And um, this shows an example of when a screen is coated and it goes into um, an exposure unit. And then on the right, it shows the different layers of the screen and the process. The middle picture is a student when I was in CIA so he had one screen, but a, he repeated the pattern on this piece of fabric. So where you see the barbed wire and the birds, he's still using that one screen. He's just moving it around. Okay. Okay, so this um, 
This is a sample of Phyllis Sloan. So um, as I said in the, in the beginning, when I first came across her prints, I just, first off, I had went to the print chair at CIA and I said, we have to all go into the archives and see this woman's screen prints because I had never ever seen such perfect screen prints. Um, this is a piece that's in the show and it shows from the drawing all the way down to the actual print. Yeah, you could go to the next. And this one I put in, um, you know, like Kesty having the plates and David Haberman, a lot of the different printmakers we have in the archives, we, we usually don't get those plates. Um, and this is the same. We have Phyllis's, just like the cat print, we have Phyllis's three layers of transparencies. We don't have the screen, but we have the transparencies that she would use um, to create the screen. And the image on the left shows you how you see the white in the figure. That would be the paper. And then she would have three screens. She would start with light and then go to dark. So um, the cream color background would be the first layer. And then the walls and some of the detail in the floor would be the second. So you would put a second screen right over that first image. And then usually the key plate is the black plate and that goes on last and that would be the detail. So if this is, um, I think a perfect segue into introducing <laughs> Jenna Sloan, which is this wicker basket here. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so Jenna is Phyllis's daughter. And um, from what I've been told that Phyllis moved to uh, Santa Fe and she had this wonderful house and she had this wonderful studio attached to the house. And after um, I had, you know, gone through Phyllis's prints, I, I contacted Jenna and she told me all about Phyllis's studio and that someone um, rents the house, but she still has her mom's studio space. And I've told my wife over and over, like, we just have to go there. Like, I just have to see it. <laughs> but when we put this show up, um, I said to Mindy, oh my gosh, can we do a Zoom with Jenna, you know, and see if she would do this, um, you know, collaboration so that we could be in Santa Fe in uh, Phyllis's studio. So I'll let Jenna take it from here. Hello, Cleveland. <laughs> and everyone everywhere else. I'm in my mother's studio. And this is her bulletin board with in the center, a drawing by Will Barnett that he gave to her. She carried his prints in the Sloan Osiki Gallery in Cleveland when she had that gallery. But here I wanna take you to what was her bedroom door. Mom added this studio to the house in 1999, right off her bedroom, because she wanted to be able to make art right away. <laughs> this is a picture of her family. My mother is on the left bottom on her father's lap. And she admitted all the time that she was indebted to her father, Nathan, for showing her the joys and challenges of a creative life. She also expressed gratitude to her sister, Rose, who's at the top right, for being so supportive of her throughout her life. And, uh, she was from a family of engineers. Her father was an engineer, mechanical, industrial engineer, 
and her uh, older brother, Bill, who's standing behind Nathan, and also Tom, who's right next to her. So here we are in mom's studio that she added to house her art when she came to Santa Fe. And I'm gonna show you, she collected a lot of objects to use in her prints. And here's some of the storage in her studio. Here are some of the objects she put in her prints. I wanted to also show you the door to the outside. And over here, this is one of mom's corks or a few of her corks that she painted and framed. She made an artwork out of her cork. <laughs> So she would use, like when I was talking about the woodcuts and linoleum, um, and I have never heard this with any other artist, but she would use cork. She would carve the cork and then print the cork. I'll tell you about that cork. She started out with uh, wood blocks when she got hold of a, a press and she tired of the wood blocks and moved to linoleum. And she went downtown where she could buy linoleum flooring. And it was in that store that someone turned her on to bulletin board cork, which she then found so much easier to cut. Now here are many of the objects still in her studio that she, she went to flea markets and antique shops, and she just had a, a plethora of objects. Up here are a bunch of the vases that look like hands. Can you see that? She put those in a lot of her heat transfer prints. And that lady, that figure on the end of that shelf was in one of her, uh, acrylics on paper. Then here is more storage of her paintings, prints. And we have a painting here that she did. It's a still life with Santa Fe rooftops in a building where she took a, a class from a workshop from Gregory Gillespie and she wound up sharing studio space downtown when artists could do that. And so she did this uh, from her studio that she shared with Will Schuster. More objects up top. <laughs> one of her heat transfer prints. Some of the colonial African figures, she had a whole collection of them and included them in her uh, artwork. And then here is a painting of a napkin that she did. Here, she did a lot of art with rooftops. You see the sky color in this uh, painting? That's definitely Cleveland. I was gonna <laughs> say it must be Cleveland. Yes, not the blue sky of Santa Fe. And then a lovely still life behind glass. Sorry for the glare. And over here, she really designed this studio to be able to house all her big paintings. And she organized her, 
her studio and her art so well toward the end of her life. But here's, um, she did a lot of New Mexico highway pictures. And then this, I don't know if you, I can get the what. I'll get rid of the glare. This is called uh, Flat Iron Cafe. I think that's from Cleveland. Does anyone know? Sure is. That's down in the flats. That's an old Irish uh, pub and um, that has been there, I think, since the late 1900s, if I'm not mistaken, at the very least since the 1920s. This is a pastel on, I believe, black paper. And that here is a still life. That's a painting, right? Yes, it's an acrylic on canvas. And here's another acrylic on canvas, another New Mexico road scene. If you drive out here, you'll see a lot of these. <laughs> and she organized in acid-free folders, acid-free uh, boxes, all her prints. Cheryl Ann Lawrence helped her, but she had a lot, a lot of prints, silk screens, cork cuts, mono prints. So not only was she, you know, just this amazing screen print artist, um, and she did beautiful etchings, she did enormous additions. Um, even the pieces here at Judson, if you ever look at any of her prints, you know, it would be, you know, 50 edition, 70, I mean, so that would mean that she would pull these, especially the screen prints that had multiple screens, she would make 50 of these, you know, and as a printmaker, you know, when you make an addition, <laughs> you are making each one exactly the same. So to be able to have multiple screens making 50 pieces spot on, um, really amazing. Now I'd like to turn over the uh, screen to Meg or Mindy while I take my phone so somewhere else. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes, I am back. Let me go ahead and share some beautiful historic images of Jenna. And pardon me, a fill is provided by Jenna. And again, thank you for your patience. Somehow, miraculously, right when I was sharing images, Zoom kicked me off and Mindy came to the rescue. So way to go team effort. Let's see here. All right, how are we looking? Go to full screen. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so we're going to go through a couple of different images just while we are resituating things. Again, these are graciously provided yeah. by Jenna of her mother. The first one here is Phyllis Sloan actually attending art camp circa 1940s. Um, these beautiful images are just stunning. And if I'm not mistaken, that should be that should be Phyllis in the chair. Am I right there? I don't know that she's in that shot. That's mm -hmm. just a shot of the class. Gotcha. But this one is definitely Phyllis, as you can see her at art camp circa 1940s. Um, just a beautiful picture of her working. We also have this wonderful shot of Sloan in 1947 when she worked at PDA with Bucky Schuetz. Uh, fun fact is Bucky is another archived artist at our institution and Tony Vix Norris. Phyllis in 1973, home studio above the ground, which she created by enclosing an, enclosing an open porch, which she connected to her bedroom by installing a spiral staircase. And finally, one of my favorite prints, you can see what a magnificent woman and artist she is. 
Phyllis in her basement studio at Fairmont Boulevard in Cleveland Heights, 1973, with an edition of Woman in the Garden, Cork Cuts, printed on the Potter Proofing Press, with her press right next to her, as you see. The press was given to Phyllis by a fellow Carnegie Tech alum, Woody Woodside, what a name, right? Shipped in parts and reassembled in the basement. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my sh screen share. Are we ready to pass it along? I just need to see that I turned the view away from me. Mm, so see. right now your view looks like, uh, Jenna, I see the studio. Is that correct? Good. Okay, got it. Good. Well, then I will stop the share and hand it over to our next adventure. Do you see me? We do, it's perfect. All right, I'll start with the cork cuts that she began when she got that Potter Press. This is from 1970, three plants. Can you see the whole print? That's great, pull it back a little. Perfect. I'll show the cork after I show you the prints. In 1974, still life. She really was exuberant with these cork cuts. And you can see some of the props that you have shown us in her studio showing up in her prints. Exactly. This is a color combination that she tried but didn't wind up using. The final print, Into the Woods, looked like this. So that would have been two layers. The green in the background would have been placed on as a flat color, and then the cork printed on top of that. Yes. And she arrived at that after rejecting anything like this. It takes a lot of experimentation. So the, gosh, I can't tell which way is up. Here's one of the corks from the first print, the three plants. Pull it back just, yeah, there you go, perfect. And here's the cork for still life in 1974. It's dirty the way you're holding them. I mean, especially because those are from the 70s, right? Yes. And then after the, the addition was done, she would paint <laughs> many of the corks. So here she found her final color and painted the final color of the addition into the woods. Here is a cork painted of my sister Lisa, a print that she had done. The print was black and white, but she just took these corks and played with them afterwards. And here's another little snippet I think this is Lisa as well. She painted the cork. <laughs> now I'll put the gloves back on again. Did you just realize that when we were practicing? Yes, I only just, put, I didn't even look at the corks until Kelly had me practice. I was practice this. about them because we don't, you know, we don't have any of the cork plates. So when she was in the studio, I asked her to pull a, a cork plate out. This is an etching and uh, mom put the ground on the plate 
and then sketched into the uh, ground. It probably wasn't a very hard, hard ground, but she, she, draw, she drew all the time. She sketched all the time. And she got that quality of her sketches into these etchings. This is a uh, first state of nude kneeling. First state was to do the drawing in the ground, print it, see what it looked like. And then she added aqua tint to give it a whole other dimension. And here's, uh, let's see, what's this called? Grand Nude 3. Grand Nude 3. Grand Nude 3. She had Grand Nude 2, Grand Nude. Here is an etching with aqua tint called Cactus. And you can see at the bottom where the, the wood is at the bottom, she got the texture of the wood using an etching tool with hatching. Very rich texture. This cactus is mesotint and she, she uh, printed the whole thing black and scratched into the surface to get the whites. This wasn't drawing, it was more like scratching. So with mesotints, you have a large um, sharp edge, like a blade, and you rock it on the plate before you do anything. So the plate has all of these marks. You go um, vertical and horizontal, and then you take um, a burnishing tool and you burnish in the image. So if it's like a copper plate from the blade, from rocking for the mesotint, you would then, you know, it would pull up some of the copper and then she would take a smooth tool and burnish down edges to create the design. It's really, really hard on your hands. Um, they're really hard to wipe once you put the ink on them. Um, yeah. I'll show it to you. Well, this was a hand colored etching from 1993. So she printed it and then did the coloring by hand. As opposed to this print, Morning Glories from 2006, this was a multi-plate etching, a different color for each plate. And now I'll show you the, uh, the plates. I hope you can see this. Just angle it a little, yeah, a little bit more. There you go. You can barely see it because when you're- Yeah, I can barely see it here. Right, right. When but here, um, it's easier for you to see. With a tool and then you put it into the acid, you know, you have to run your finger over it to feel that there's anything there. And this is with the aqua tint. You can see where the ink was in the, uh, I don't know, the little holes for the aqua tint. And the same here, aqua tint. And you can do several runs to get different, uh, different depths of black or gray as you wish. And this one. With 
cactus. And that's all I have to show you today. So with the aquatins, um, you use rosin, which is a some, somewhat like uh, sawdust, and it puts an extra layer. And with um, Phyllis's aquatin prints that we have at the archives, it almost looks like the paper's velvet. Um, it, it gives a totally different texture to the pieces. I'll hold that one up again. Yeah. Well, this was really, really wonderful. And I believe that we are going to take some questions. Are you okay with you that? Can, I have to move my phone again so you can show some more pictures. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so what I'll do in the meantime is let me uh, pop on the old screen share again and show some things and we'll, then we'll get right into Q&A. And we are here. How are we looking? Okay. Good. Awesome. So here is some more contemporary ones of Phyllis in her studio with her beloved cat. So cats make an appearance in a lot of her printmaking. Um, and also they, they, were, they were there for reference. It's true. And Jenna said in the practices that she has still found some cat hairs in the prints. <laughs> <laughs> As a proud cat mama yeah. myself, I am not surprised. I am not. <laughs> Here is another beautiful shot of Phyllis in the very Santa Fe studio that we just saw a tour with, with Jenna. Phyllis at work. Kelly, I think that that's actually, is that on a, is she currently like etching into a plate? Is that correct in that image? It looks that's like what it actually. looks like. Yeah. yeah. Now that precision and you know the hands of a printmaker are so beautiful. And then finally, we will end with this beautiful full color of Phyllis surrounded by all of her tools of the trade and just a gorgeous piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and then throw it to you, Kelly, and then we will kick into some beautiful- It's a great view there. Um, we couldn't have the blinds open because of the sun, um, but- when Jenna was showing me the studio, you know, you could just see these huge windows. Um, I can't imagine the light that came through for her when she was creating. So, um, do we have any questions here at Judson for me? Or let me take that over. You can yell. <laughs> There are Phyllis Sloan in there. Yes, yes. There's there. Yes, there's many. I believe the question was, is Phyllis Sloan? What was the question? Kelly? Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, they were someone asked about um, the pieces here at Judson. So we have Kesty, Phyllis Sloan and David Haberman. Yes. So I would, um, the question was, does the cork hold up better than the linoleum? Um, the ones that are pitting are metal. Um, what happens with the linoleum is it gets very brittle um, and starts to crack. Something that can happen, and there's some out there, sometimes you can mount them on wood. I have never, um, experience the cork. So Jenna, I mean, yeah, Jenna, how do the cork plates look? Well, they, they're thick. They're, they're like a quarter inch thick, at least. They look good to me. Yeah, I almost wonder just by the way Jenna was handling them, it almost seems like they hold up better than linoleum. I was wondering if the, the way she painted the cork um, actually helped to preserve it, you know, because it would have put a layer right. on top of it that's kind of yep. holding it together over time. And that might be why she did it. 
No, she when she painted them, that was when she was going to use them in an art piece. Oh, okay. She okay. was just playing. She was playing around. She had no rules. She didn't study printmaking. She <laughs> experienced it <laughs> firsthand and made up her own rules. But she did take uh, a bunch of artists uh, from Cleveland downtown to take a workshop in an industrial silkscreen company. And she learned a lot. That was in one of those books uh, from her, I think in the Las Vegas exhibition book. Yeah. Bob Bell or somebody wrote about it. Is there any other questions here at Judson? Yes. So Jenna, they're asking what's going on in the studio now? Right now, uh, there used to be an etching press in here and um, my sister agreed to lend that etching press to Argos uh, Gallery and Etching Studio. So the etching press is gone and we rearranged some of the furniture, but all her remaining artwork is here and the art estate is being uh, shown by Gerald Peters Gallery in Santa Fe. They're handling the estate through me, through my siblings and me managing. So we left it just the way it was. I mean, all her photo albums and her sketchbooks and her filing cabinets with the file files of her life are here. <laughs> it's waiting and for me to go down and see it. <laughs> waiting for Kelly. <laughs> yes. You could organize a so, tour. So for the um, printers. Right, exactly. So like Jenna was saying, the house is attached. Um, so she would come out of her bedroom and that was the studio. So am I right, Jenna, that someone rents the home? Yes, very nice people rent the home. Are they artists? Do they use No. Them? No. 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 It's a gay woman and her son and daughter who live here. Mm. And they're, they're just terrific. Is there any other questions here at Judson? All right, um, Megan. There you go. So just as a, my recording picked. So what actually seems to problem seems to be remarkably on Zoom's end, which is, I never like to blame third parties, but um, go figure, Zoom's having a moment. But we have really good, we all have moments. Today is Zoom's, okay. <laughs> but we have some really remarkable comments that I'd love to actually get through and some questions. Um, so I'm gonna just hit you with some really appreciative comments first, Jenna. Um, the first one was actually from Crystal Paulus, who used to be, uh, I believe Crystal, I know she worked for the AAWR. I believe she was the director for the AAWR, if I am not mistaken. Um, so she actually says, thank you for this trip down memory lane. Phyllis was one of the best people I ever knew. I have two of her screen prints that she gifted to me when I left the AAWR in 2002. They hang in my dining room and I enjoy them every day. So, and then also another comment was from Nina Gibbons, a steadfast supporter of the archives, an arts writer and a brilliant art historian herself. She says, Thank you for a wonderful presentation. We were friends of both David, meaning David E. Davis, um, the founder, and Phyllis. And I even think your, uh, you or your, or Lisa taught our daughter in France. So, and then she says, is the studio ever in Santa Fe ever open for visitors? Only by appointment. So what I'll do is pop, I'm going to put Jenna, um, uh, Jenna's email in the chat. Um, I've also put a link to the Gerald Peters Gallery in the chat. Uh, I believe Mindy will speak to this later, but if there's any inquiries concerning actually obtaining Phyllis's work, those will be the two ways to do it, either through the gallery or through the email that I'll be putting in shortly. So uh, let's get to some more of these questions, which is, so this is from uh, an attendee. It says, in a restrike, 
Can you describe how you get a sense of the artist's intent of how the inking should be done? Or do you take the printer artistic license to create new interpretation of the piece? So Kelly, I believe that's going to be directed towards you who sort of facilitated the restrike project. Sure. Um, so what we had done was when we first started thinking about the, this project with CIA, um, that was a consideration. And what I had the students do is come into the archives and I pulled a lot of Kesti's prints and I had them look at them and really kind of study how he would use the ink and um, a lot of his relief pieces, um, you know, it was a straight on roll on black and print it. But some of the etchings, which we have here, um, those are definitely could change according to the artists, the way they wipe them, the way they leave ink in certain spots. Um, so on a restrike, you want to get it as close to, to possible as how the artist, artists, you know, would produce that. Um, and these are all, all the restrikes are chopped that says it's a CIA AAWR restrike. Um, we were very, very clear that these weren't original Kesti's prints. So, thanks, Kelly. And um, we'll actually, in lieu of Mindy, who was uh, popped off Zoom, we'll have her talk a little bit, Kelly, a little bit more about the Restrike Project. Yeah. Just a moment. Um, so, I told you how this came about. And when I was talking to the chair- oh, uh, Kelly, real quick, I'm, I'm, before you move into that, should I finish the questions? Oh, sure. That way it's like, Clean segments, that's the German in me. What can I say? <laughs> so um, real quick was that we had a couple of quickies just to finish up with Jenna. Um, and this one was a straightforward one, which was what year did Phyllis graduate from Carnegie Tech? Approximately, circa. <laughs> that's a great, I yeah. think I have that written down here maybe. Oh, wow, you're good. Do I, uh, nine, I think she graduated 1943. Wow. Wow. It's so amazing. Yeah. To see a woman strongly educated in the arts in the 40s. That is she, she got a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Carnegie Tech, but she was in the School of Industrial Design. They didn't have a fine arts department. We have she learned to use lots of equipment. And some of the projects from when she was in Carnegie Mellon in the archives. Um, and if anybody would ever want to see that, just contact us and we can pull that. It's just a remarkable woman that's doing engineering and fine art. And it's just, it's, it's just, it's humbling is what it is. So, <laughs> um, and then I have one more, which was a, just another final, we'll end with this final comment for Jenna before we'll transition over into a little bit more about that Restrike project. And this is from Terse Santa Marie. And it is, and forgive me if I'm, the pronunciation was incorrect, um, but it says, thank you for this presentation and studio tour. I worked for Phyllis in her studio in Little Italy in the late 1980s to 1990s and adored her. It makes me so happy to know that her Santa Fe studio remains. So, and then we also have one from Clarissa, just simply she's an, a fellow artist of the archives and she says amazing prints and thanks for sharing. So. Mm. Uh, so um, if you have any further questions for Jenna, um, or just in general, again, we'll, we'll talk about the sales uh, or interested in Phyllis, Phyllis's artwork, I'm going to put her email right now in the chat. And please, she, I imagine I'm speaking for her, but would love to hear inquiries and uh, questions concerning her mom. So uh, go for it, Kelly. Uh, I have on our little schedule to talk a little bit more about that restrike program. I'm also going to say that, um, Jenna, I believe that you also um, keep the website phyllissloan.com up and running yeah. um, yes. and the contact information for email and that it goes to Jenna um, so if you wanted to see any other pieces of hers and um, as you can see she still has work that could be for sale <laughs> um, so and that link is now in the chat as well. Here's phyllissloan.com and then Phyllis's email will be right on the heels. Thank you. Um, so with the collaboration, I don't know if you wanna share the screen because 
I know that Mindy had some slides. Um, this was like or let me get that a up. really special project that we had done with the students. Um, and I was, being a printmaker, I was like really involved and I would go to CIA and I would film some of the students while they were, you know, preparing these plates and that. Um, and the way that the professors set it up was they came to the archives, studied Kesty's work, and then they were able to pick a plate. And we have a large selection, so they could pick whatever they wanted, a etching plate, um, wood or linoleum. And they would go through cleaning the plate and um, printing the plates. And they made an addition for the archives, a very small addition of three. Um, and then they also made a response piece. So what they did was they took a small section of that plate of Kesty, there's Kesty there, um, and they printed that small section and then they made their own piece in response. So this is a picture of when the students came um, to CIA, I, I mean to the artist archives, I had all the prints, most of the prints out and um, they spent almost the whole day there kind of going through the prints and that. Is there another? Yeah, it's just go ahead and tell me to pop it forward. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what these images are. So oh, okay. um, this is again them at the archives and then the image on the right is one of the students getting ready to print one of the plates. So you can, And then um, like I talked before about um, the addition, this was the restrike that we have here hanging at Judson, eternal vigilance. Um, and then you can see the multiples. Um, this is also, I believe this is on our website maybe, is it? That is correct. Yeah, so, so images and Maggie Dank Lee, we, it's pretty long, but if you want to watch it, um, it's on our website and she had produced this um, talking about Kesty's plate, which she's holding and kind of doing a little demo with it. And she, she did it for the Cleveland Print Club. Um, that was in 2020. And this was um, the plate that she was talking about and she actually printed it. Um, and then, you know, there's some videos on that. This was the, so once the project was done in the student alum gallery, um, we had a show and um, we had the students restrikes. And then that's me with Nikki Woods. She's the director of the gallery. And those pieces are the students response and the section of the Kesty that they were responding to. This is the um, crash test dummy again, which I talked about. And then these are some of, some of these, actually all of these are here at, at Judson. So there were eight people involved in the project and we had come, came up with um, creating a portfolio. So with a portfolio, everyone gets a portfolio and the portfolio has all of the prints in it. So um, up here shows the crash test dummy and then Nick's respond piece. And the same with the POW print and then the student's response piece. So the portfolio has 16 prints and there's a couple of them, right? Yeah, there's some more. You can see the Kesty piece or section and then the response piece. So we made 12 portfolios. Um, CIA got two, one for their permanent archive, and then they're gonna sell one. And the artist archives also got to one for our collection, and then we will be selling one of the portfolios. And that is actually the end yeah. of the slideshow. So 
So if anybody would be interested in that, you could call the archives and talk to Mindy, but it really, it was a, it was really a wonderful project. Um, and I always like to tell the story because when I was at CIA once filming all the students, um, all of a sudden they started talking to him like he was in the room. And I didn't know Kesty, but I had reconnected with um, a couple of the people what had happened was when he got sick, he had about 10 fr friends that just like rallied around him. He was never married, didn't have kids. He was an only child um, and they took care of him. And he said that there was two things that he wanted before he died. He wanted to have two solo shows, not sure why two. Um, and then he wanted his printing press to go to a school in Lithuania. So his parents were from Lithuania. So this group of friends um, contacted the archives, got him in as an archived artist, had two solo shows. And from those shows, they raised enough money that they sent his pr printing press to Lithuania. Um, so just knowing that we were gonna collaborate with students, this is what he would have wanted. I mean, he was a teacher. So it was really, um, when the students started talking to him, I thought it was just so funny that um, they were connecting on that level. So I think that's it, right? I have that one question in the Q&A uh, and then we'll just see if we have any other questions. Um, so the final one is, um, Kelly, regarding this project, is that do the students explain their thinking for the response pieces? I'm assuming, did they explain like the selection of what particular print they chose out of that? Yes. Yeah. There is um, certification of the project and um, with each portfolio um, shows a little bit, a little artist statement of why they selected the piece and their response. Awesome. Well, Kelly and, and Jenna, thank you so much for doing this program today. Thank you for bearing with all the craziness. It always adds an adventure. <laughs> and again, I put Jenna's contact information in the chat. If you have further questions about her mom's work or interest in inquiry or talking more about the studio, please do not hesitate to hit her up right there. Also, there's a website for Phyllis Sloan. Um, so that you can look at more of her beautiful images and probably play the game of spot things that are in the studio that show up in her work, <laughs> which I love. I want to um, thank also Jenna for doing this. Um, yeah. This was really a pleasure, you know, and I think one of the um, advantages of the last year was that Jenna has joined our um, <laughs> programs through Zoom. Um, so thank you so much. And um, next week, another show goes up here at Judson, um, like Mark had talked about. We are having a very large LGBTQ show at the archives in August, and Judson Converge um, will open next week. So um, we also will have, um, we have five gay archived artists, so their pieces will be exhibited. Um, Bill Jean and Tom Rose will also have pieces that will be for sale. Um, so there will be some archived work that will not be for sale, but we have been asked multiple times um, and we're gonna have some of Bill Jean's new watercolors and then um, Tom Rose just does some pretty amazing drawings. So look for that next week. Well, thank you, everyone, and thank you again to our marvelous funders, as that's going to be the Bernice and David E. Davis Foundation for the Cleveland Foundation, the Gun Foundation, and the Zoo Foundation for making everything possible, and for all of you guys for coming today. There'll be a recording, albeit they'll, we'll do some fancy editing. <laughs> Kind of close some gaps in there. We'll see what <laughs> how good my editing skills are, and we'll get that in the website hopefully within a week. Um, editing permitting, <laughs> and um, just thank you all for joining. Uh, this is and then Jenna again. This has been an absolute treasure to see. And thank you all. This was really fun. Thank really you. Really fun. Well, thank all you. of you all have a wonderful evening. We're going to go quietly fall down now, and <laughs> we will talk to you all very soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day, Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Kelly. Meg.
Bye. Bye, everyone.